and I have a water bottle here that uh, says BPA free on it. And when I read some of your book, when you talk about how um, some of these chemicals, it's like chemical whack-a-mole, I think was the term you used. Um, so could you, could you talk a little bit about that, why something like BPA free may not give the security that we hope it would? Yeah, so we're moving to the topic of chemicals. This is a, a massive topic that doesn't get enough attention. It's something I've been studying for a long time, and uh, you'll really get me going because, yeah, there's a chapter in the middle of our book. I'm not trying to sell a book here, um, but it talks about our global chemical experiment. And I promise if you read it, uh, uh, it, sh it should shock you. It should absolutely shock you because there's an assumption that the products we buy are safe and that we don't – that if there was a chemical that was toxic, well, of course, it shouldn't be in your water bottle or my couch or my kid's child, you know, car seat. Um, but the, here's how it works, and here's the problem. There are over 80,000 chemicals in commerce. Very few have been tested for health and safety. And so what happens is we don't follow the precautionary principle. We allow companies to put these chemicals in commerce. And then if we, the scientists, find out it's harmful, they take it out. But what happens is they often replace the toxic chemical with a chemical cousin that's just as toxic. And we call this chemical whack-a-mole. And it's this never-ending game that's been played for decades. And BPA is a great example. So if you're a, a customer, uh, you know, you're, you're well-meaning, you know, you look at your bottle. Okay, there's two bottles. One says BPA-free. Well, I must, I'll get the BPA-free one, right? Uh, BPA must be bad, even if you know nothing about BPA. And BPA stands for bisphenol A. It's a hormone-disrupting uh, chemical that's used in some plastics. The reality is, though, BPA got a bad rap. And so manufacturers seized on this, and they said, well, I'm going to sell BPA-free everything. They didn't just take out BPA. They took out BPA, but they replaced it with its chemical cousin, BPS, for bisphenol S. Sure enough, the toxicological profile looks exactly the same darn near similar to BPA. So in that way, they played a game with you as a consumer. BPA free is great. That label might as well say contains BPS. BPS is starting to get a bad rap. You know what the replacement is? BPF. This goes on and on. Uh, we, we've seen this with pesticides decades ago. We see this chemical whack-a-mole in nail polish. We see swapping of chemicals in e-cigarettes. We see this in flame retardants in, that are in your couch and my couch. Uh, we see this with these forever chemicals, these stain repellent chemicals that uh, can cause testicular cancer that you find in nonstick pans that are used uh, on carpets. And there was one that was labeled bad. OK, that was removed and it was just subbed in for another one. So this game of chemical whack-a-mole uh, happens all the time. And, and we sometimes call it uh, regrettable substitution is the less playful name for it. But it's another name I don't like, you know, because it implies there's, oh, whoops, we made a mistake. It's a regrettable substitution. Whoops. This has been happening for decades. There's nothing regrettable about it. It's a knowing uh, failure of the system and a loophole in our chemical policy. And here's where it's interesting for all of us and everybody. These chemicals, they migrate out of their products. And if you take something like these forever chemicals um, that are the ones that are in your nonstick pans and, and in your carpets and, and they're on our clothes, it makes things, you know, water and soil just wash off these days. It's amazing. We love them as consumers. Um, well, these things are really pernicious. I mean, they last in the environment forever. I wrote an op-ed calling them forever chemicals and named them that two or three years ago at this point when that piece came out. Um, but they're associated with these harmful effects, carcinogenic effects. Uh, they're associated with, they're called obesogens. They interfere with lipid metabolism. Um, so we have all of these, you know, um, uh, known adverse effects. We keep using them and we have this chemical whack-a-mole. And the problem with these forever chemicals is there's like, at this point, 6,000 variants. So what do we even study next, right? Uh, so as a consumer, we really have no chance to be like a thoughtful consumer and avoid these things because it's a totally uh, it's a totally broken system. Any specific recommendations for people to help navigate this this landscape of uh, of chemical whack-a-mole and and finding products that are safe to use? Yeah, so you know, I, I think the first thing is is uh, all getting informed about this, right? Because I think few people know this is going on. Again, I'm not trying to sell a book here, but you could find, you know, look up Forever Chemicals, look up I, this op-ed on chemical whack-a-mole. Uh, if you're interested, read that chapter, and you'd be really surprised. And then we can start asking for it. I'll say, 
from a from a, a system standpoint, we're trying to address this through my Healthy Buildings program at Harvard, with Harvard's Office for Sustainability. We created the Harvard Healthy Materials Academy, and what we're doing is um, we're starting to change buying practices. So instead of a company saying, well, here's something that doesn't have BPA, we're starting to ask and say, well, what else is in it? And by the way, we don't want anything in that whole class of chemicals, right? We're not going to play this whack-a-mole game. Forever chemicals, we don't want any of them. I don't care what your next safe replacement is that you tell us is safe that we'll find out it's toxic. And we're having a lot of success. We have 40 pilot projects, over 40 pilot projects on our campus, where we're showing that you can design these spaces with great products that don't impact cost or time of your project. Uh, they look great, perform the same, and you don't have the toxic chemicals in them. So there's a way to do it. We're trying to move that with the market. We partnered with Google two years ago on this uh, initiative. Many other our big companies are starting to put their buying power uh, behind this movement to kind of rid the, the market of these um, you know, these toxic chemicals that uh, that are in everything. There are, are deodorants and shampoos. I, don't use shampoo. That's a bad example for me. Uh, but in our couches, chairs, you know, they're all around us. Um, so the, I, the way to do it is to move upstream and, um, and change the, the whole system. 